In this video, I'll be showing you the best ways to structure a TNT Mark IV Sandeviston build, including how to lower your Sandeviston cooldown to 2 seconds, how to get optical camo to last effectively for 45 seconds, how to get weapons which actually fire at a decent rate within savvy time, as well as general tips and tricks to make you the fastest Sandeviston user you could ever possibly be. There's also a potential future method for genuinely infinite slow-mo which I'll be covering, but right now that is bugged and we're patiently awaiting a non definite patch on it. I put out a poll recently to determine once and for all everyone's favourite Sandeviston in Cyberpunk 2077. Unsurprisingly, an overwhelming 80% of you voted for this one, the GNT Mark IV. And yes, you did hear me right, it is indeed pronounced GNT, a fact that was recently pointed out to me by commenter Oatmeat, citing Rogue's way of saying it when she briefs us during the Ghost Town mission. But he does pop up in GNT's confidential stacks. I'd just like to take this moment to apologise for pronouncing it quiet all this time, I promise I will never do it again. Anyway, back to the point. The quiet mark fuck. The TNT Mark IV is a fan favourite for predominantly one reason. The 15 second base cooldown with the potential to be lowered all the way to an insane two seconds. So without further ado, let's dive straight into how to acquire that. In order to get your hands on the TNT Mark IV itself, you're going to want to head over here to Fingers Rip It Up Clinic. Hopefully you haven't punched a dude at this point in your playthrough, else you're going to have to reload a previous save in order to make his shop available again. If you want to acquire the TNT beforehand and punch Fingers as well, because you know he's a bit of a prick, I've got another video which goes over exactly how to do that. As always, we've got to start this off with the correct attributes and perks. Our priority sections for this build are of course reflexes for the Sandeviston itself and technical ability to craft the legendary heat sinks we'll be needing for the cooldown. After that, I'd split remaining points between body and cool. Mine is a little unbalanced admittedly, you do indeed want more cool than I do, but I've been using this same character for multiple builds now, so we've had to compromise a little bit here. Now, this build is going to incorporate shotguns, so buy up these annihilation perks, we're also going to be taking a advantage of the rapid firing pistols, so sink a few points in the handguns. Blades will be a huge focus for this build, so you want whatever perks you can acquire from that section. Now into crafting, in order to get the very best version of this build that you can, you are going to need the Edge Runner Artisan perk. The other perks here are helpful in leveling crafting more quickly, but basically Edge Runner Artisan is the most vital perk of this entire build, it's how we're going to craft the legendary heat sinks. Another pretty vital perk comes from the ninjutsu section, the one allowing us to throw knives. It's not absolutely vital to this build, but definitely one of the most satisfying parts, so don't miss it. In order to get those heat sinks to legendary, you're going to have to go on a little bit of a grind. Firstly though, head over to the Ripper Dock in Arroyo and purchase from him the heat sink crafting spec. Now that we have that, all we need is level 18 in crafting, which is easier said than done. My advice if you want to do this as quickly as possible would be to pull off this game's version of the Skyrim Iron Dagger smithing technique. It basically involves crafting a bucket load of inhalers until you hit level 18. To acquire the components for this, you can either buy inhalers from vendors, then disassemble and I suppose reassemble them, or if you want a slightly more organic and interesting experience, just keep playing the game and make a point of looting everything you see as well as collecting every weapon and disassembling most of them. Remember to grab the crafting perks which lower item component cost as it'll mean you don't have to work as hard to acquire those precious crafting materials. When you finally hit those stats, go ahead and craft the heat sinks. We'll need three for this build. I hope you've got some eddies left over, as it's time for the expensive part, cyberware. You don't have to copy exactly what I've got here, though there's a few things I highly recommend to get the most out of this build. The bioconductor of course will knock off 30% of our cooldown time, taking it from 3 seconds to 2. The epic nano relays will extend our Sandeviston duration from 12 seconds to 13, and I'll explain why this is so useful in a second. For the other slot in nervous system though, do not buy the Korenzikov, or any other time slowing cyberware for that matter. Not as of patch 1.61 least. This video was originally going to be a literal infinite slow-mo tutorial wherein you'd switch to Korenzikov for the two seconds your Sandeviston was cooling down. Unfortunately, due to a very annoying bug, this doesn't work. Korenzikov instead increases our cooldown to 15 seconds, even for Sandeviston. As you can see here, after using Korenzikov, I'm unable to activate the Sandy until the Korenzikov cooldown timer has expired. It is incredibly annoying, but hopefully this will one day get patched out. Anyway, with the Korenzikov being a waste of money, 
money and space, I'd recommend the maneuvering system for increased, well, maneuverability I suppose. There is a very brilliant exploit you can use by combining optical camo with the sand devastant. Now whilst optical camo only technically lasts for 15 seconds, if we enter sandy time with it active, our camo countdown also slows to 25% along with all of our body and everything. Meaning in the 13 seconds under the effect of the sand devastant, optical camo will only use up 3.25 of its 15 seconds. Getting a little bit mathsy here I know, but I determined ultimately that with perfect timing you can effectively stretch optical camo all the way to 45 seconds. Now that is absolutely insane if you're taking on a small group of enemies as 45 seconds is more than enough time to dispatch them all before anybody can even see you. Especially if we grab up the micro rotors and micro vibration generator making us faster and deadlier. Finally we're going to use the mantis blades for this particular build as their long distance lunge power attack couples insanely well with our super speed dynamic allowing us to reach nearby enemies in a fraction of a fraction of a second of real time which is utterly insane. Congratulations, you are now an invisible phantom capable of taking out anything and anyone with inhuman speed and stealth. But take it from me, being an unstoppable god 100% of the time sure is fun at first but eventually you're going to get pretty bored. That's why I'd recommend taking out a decent range of weapons for more variety in combat as well as, well, fun I suppose. As I've said before on this channel, there's few things in this game more satisfying than throwing knives in sandy time and watching them land. So a knife is a no-brainer. After that, weapons are pretty much up to you. They are more of a fun-based option after all. But just for the hell of it, this is what I chose. I'm a huge fan of pistols and obviously when you're going to be in constant slow-mo, you want the fastest firing pistol you can find. This is Lizzie, and can be found when you meet with Judy during the automatic love quest. This thing fires incredibly quickly, and is the only pistol really that isn't massively held back by the time slow effect. What's more, you can craft an epic version pretty easily after leveling up that crafting skill so well earlier. Finally, since Sandevistons are, by their very nature, an up close and personal power up, we're going to grab a shotgun, specifically the Militech Crusher, as it is the fastest firing shotgun in the game. You can either acquire the epic crafting spec during the Wasteland Cyber Psycho gig, or just go to Marty Jenklo at the petrol station over here for the rare version. Whilst this thing does have a decent rate of fire, it's really best reserved for situations where enemies are spread out, since in sandy time, there's still a small wait between firing each shot. Now that you have all the knowledge you need, dear viewer, to construct this literal Quicksilver style build for yourself in Cyberpunk 2077, it's time I impart to you a few final tips of wisdom. Things I have discovered myself when using this build all across Night City. 1. This build is incredibly dynamic. With near constant slow-mo, you can use it for a lot more than simple combat scenarios. Keep up with vehicles, escape detection at times when it should be impossible, hell, you can even slow time just to get more time for assessing a situation. Whilst David Martinez might reserve his sandy for combat use only due to the toll it takes on his body, we're not limited in the same way, with the freedom to be as versatile as our imaginations will allow. 2. Blades only is full stealth mode. If you decide to go mantis blades and knives only, you can employ that silence along with optical camo in order to take out entire enemy bases completely undetected. This can be especially useful for missions where stealth is a requirement, or perhaps you may just enjoy the challenge of darting around an enemy base invisible and seeing how long it takes them to notice you. I wish I had more tips for this build but to be honest it makes the game so easy after doing this that there isn't that much in the ways of skill you need to be aware of. Just have a blast using it I guess. I know I did. Comment down below your thoughts on this build and whether there's anything you would do here better or differently. I always love reading your comments and I try my best to reply to most if not all of them. If you found this video useful don't forget to leave a like as it helps out the channel a lot. Finally if you want to join the 1% of my viewers who are subscribed to this channel then please hit that subscribe button to stay up to date on all my future videos. Thanks for watching. I'm Sam Bram, you guys are awesome, and I'll see you in another video.